Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Renegade Mushroom Lair. Uh, got another video for you guys today. And uh, this is kind of a cool trick. Uh, I've done this several times in the past and uh, it's worked out really well for me. And it's another way that you can capture a culture in order to grow a species of mushroom. So in order to grow a species of mushroom, we have to, like I said, capture a culture somehow. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, you can do tissue cloning of a wild mushroom, a store-bought mushroom, whatever. Do that on an auger, get some auger plates going. Uh, you can start it that way. You can buy liquid culture from a liquid culture syringe supplier. There's a lot of those out there. Um, or you can buy pre-made spawn. And uh, this is what, that's what I have right here. Uh, this is a pre-made bag of grain spawn. This is Italian oyster, Pleurotus pulmonaris. And this is one of my favorite oysters to grow in the warmer months around here. My basement gets up to around 65, 70. And uh, these grow really well at that temperature. They're a beautiful mushroom. They're really tasty. And uh, I have a weakness for like cool oyster mushroom strains. And this is definitely one of my favorites. So this is just a bag of uh, wheat. This is wheat spawn that I bought from a spawn supplier online. Uh, including shipping, I'd say this cost me about $30. What I'm going to show you today is how to capture some liquid culture from a grain spawn bag. And this is kind of a cool cost effective way to get a culture rolling because not only are you going to get some liquid culture of this strain that you can expand out and make more LC and grow for years and years and years and years, but when you're done, you also have a bag of grain spawn that you can use because the process I'm going to do to capture some liquid culture here doesn't really damage the spawn at all. Um, this works better with grain spawn. Uh, the reason is what we're going to do is we're going to pull some pre-sterilized uh, nutrient broth out of a jar and we're going to actually inject some right into this bag. And uh, I, I wiped down the surface of the bag with some rubbing alcohol and then I stuck on one of our MicroPose self-healing injection ports here, right on the corner. And what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to take a syringe full of nutrient broth and we're going to shoot it right up into this bag. And we're going to let it kind of filter its way through all these grain kernels and all this mycelium. And then we're going to suck some of the liquid culture back out into the syringe. And that's going to become our base for our new liquid culture. So. Once you pull it back out, then you inject it back into the jar that you just pulled the nutrient broth from, and that becomes a jar of viable liquid culture after you let it grow out for a couple few weeks. Um, so this works better with grain spawn than it does with sawdust spawn because uh, sawdust is really good at absorbing liquid, where grain spawn is not, a, not as good at that. So if you try this with sawdust spawn, you inject a bunch of, I'm going to do like 20 cc's of LC up in here. Uh, you're you're going to have a lot of trouble getting anything back out of the sawdust because the sawdust is going to soak all that up. Uh, with the grain spawn, it will also soak up some of the liquid, but some of it's going to pool back into this corner and I will be able to pull some back out. Now I'm going to shoot this full of probably 20 cc's, like I said, 20, 25 and I may get five to 10 back out. So you're not gonna get it all back out. But, uh, so I'm gonna get some nice mycelium laden LC back out of this bag. And then uh, I'm still gonna be able to use the bag because the nutrient broth I'm injecting is sterilized. And the, the hole that I puncture with the needle is gonna, is gonna heal right back up with this injection port. And uh, probably in a, you know, a day or two, I'm going to go ahead and use the spawn to get a uh, get an oyster grow going as well. So I'm going to set everything up here in front of the flow hood. And uh, I'm just going to have the camera running and you guys can watch me do it. Um, it will be a little loud. Um, so hopefully you guys can hear me if I'm talking. But uh, the other thing is that I've found through experience of doing this several times. And uh, I got to say I've done this, oh, I don't know, maybe half a dozen times. And I shouldn't even say this, but uh, it hasn't contaminated on me yet. It's worked every time. But uh, don't put your injection site on a flat part of the bag. Uh, I like to go to a corner or a, you know, a little corner like this. 
because that's just going to make it easier for that nutrient broth to pool back in that area so you can extract some back out with your syringe but uh, i'm going to kick the flow hood on and uh, we'll get rolling and see how it works out so as always everything you see on the table uh, including my hands have been thoroughly cleaned with uh, rubbing alcohol and we're ready to rock Just jump in here quickly with a little narration guys. I'm going to be flame sterilizing my needle with my torch between every step as usual. Uh, that paper towel I have with me is completely soaked in 70% isopropyl. It's not dripping but you do want it soaked uh, before you use it. And uh, if you have any questions on the liquid culture end of this, uh, like my recipe, how I make my jars, how to equalize the pressure, all that stuff. Uh, I have videos on all that on my channel, and I will link those in the description of the video. So that's it guys we are all set pretty quick and painless and for about $30 uh, got a bunch of grain spawn ready to use to get an oyster grill going and uh, got a nice liquid culture jar so it's a pretty good trick uh, I'm gonna let this grow out for two to three weeks and I'll keep you guys updated and uh, even though hopefully you could see it on the camera I only got maybe five to seven cc's back out of the bag I could tell when I held it up to the light that it was full of little bits of mycelium so it's an oyster too so they grow like crazy so I'm guessing in two to three weeks this jar is going to be full of mycelium and then I can go ahead and use that as liquid culture for quite a while to uh, get some more grows going so I'm not telling you not to buy liquid culture uh, I love my liquid culture suppliers uh, but uh, and I do buy syringes all the time but, you know, if you use up a syringe and you're like, oh, I should have done some liquid culture with that. Uh, and all you have is like some grain spawn. You can go ahead and do this trick 
and uh, get, get some LC right back out of your grain spawn. There's other ways to do it, obviously. You could take a kernel of grain spawn, drop it on some auger, uh, drop it in a jar of liquid culture. Um, but those, especially if you don't have a flow hood, are, are really risky. Uh, you could try and do it in a glove box, but you definitely can't do those things in open air. Uh, this, this trick I just showed you, uh, you could do this without a flow hood. Um, having the flow hood helps. I have one, so I'm using it obviously. But if you just did this on a really clean table in a clean room, usually these LC techniques, you can get away with them uh, without a flow hood. So uh, there's lots of different ways to do it, but this is a really cool trick. I've done it several times, like I said, and I've had 100% success rate with it. So try it out and let me know what you think in comments and we'll catch you next video.